Good evening, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us for this, uh, this Michaelmas comedy debate. Tonight, the motion before the house is this house is a joke, and you are all very much invited to take part in one of two ways. First of all, during each of our speaker speeches tonight, you can make a point of information. You can do this by indicating and saying, point of information, on that point, raising your hand. It is entirely up to our speakers if they decide to take that point. If you think that you're really, really funny and want to prove that to everyone tonight, this is your opportunity. But if you want also to make a point in proposition, opposition, and abstention of the motion, there will also be a floor round after our first pair of speakers have spoken, and then also before the final pairing of speakers. A couple of other notices tonight. Please just remember that when you do make a point, wait for a microphone to get to you, and all the detail about how to do so is also on the reverse of your order paper. But without further ado, we will go to our first speaker this evening. Pierre Nobelli is an Asnac comedian who is returning to Cambridge after his great days of studying Anglo-Saxon, Northern Celtic. He has done the MASH report on BBC Two, the Edinburgh Fringe, and bits and pieces on Radio 4, as well as many other places and venues. Pierre, the floor is now yours. Thank you very much. That's right, an Asnac with a career. <laughs> the rarest thing in the world. I've come back from the real world with terrible news for you all. This house is a joke. <laughs> Looking out on a sea of innocent faces, none of you think you're going to become consultants. You all are. I don't know what industry you're in, but I can see it in your eyes. This house is a joke. What is it? Is that a Game of Thrones? We're all here to have a little chat in. I think I recognize one of the corners over there from one of the more erotic incest scenes. What happens in here? You guys debate things. You use facts. Have you seen the state of the world? The time for debate and facts is over. Have you seen who's in charge of America? It's essentially Lord Alan Sugar if he was more orange and racist. <laughs> the time for debate and facts is done. This house is no longer fit for purpose. You guys have to update your style. It's been 200 years you've been concerned with what's true. What's true doesn't matter. Not now, not anymore. Who am I to tell you that? Well, I'll tell you. My name is Pierre Novelli. I did Asnac here, as you say. But don't be fooled by my splendid velvet jacket or its lining. I'm from a very humble background. I was born at the tender age of zero. <laughs> which is a very young age to clamber out of someone's uterus. It's very young. It's not the sort of thing that should happen to a child. I was born in a humble log cabin that I built myself. <laughs> is any of this true? It doesn't matter. The point is that I'm wearing a velvet jacket, and that's the most trustworthy kind of jacket available. Isn't that right, sir? My brother in arms over there? Is that true? Doesn't matter. How could a penniless comedian like me afford such a splendid jacket, much less the helicopter ride here? It doesn't matter which Russian media company paid for me to be here tonight. Or who funds that media company. None of that information is relevant. All you need to know is that the skills you learn in this chamber are no longer the skills you need to survive. <laughs> yes, why not? What's my bow tie made of? It's made of whatever Marks and Spencers like to make their bow ties out of. <laughs> but for the purposes of my argument, the finest silk. Because <laughs> it doesn't matter. If I say it's true, then it is. That's the world we live in now. Any society that tries to further debate and free speech is done. No new ideas. It's taken ages for me to assemble my view of reality in a way that I find most pleasing. And I will not tolerate anyone uncouth enough to come along and spoil that. It's rude, if anything, <laughs> to come and try and feed new ideas into my little noggin. I'm absolutely fine with the stupid ideas I have. And uh, you can trust me because I'm a patriot. How do you know I'm a patriot? Because I just told you I'm a patriot. I have the entire national anthem tattooed on my back including the 17th verse about why we should never trust the Cornish. <laughs> yes. Can you see it? No. You have to believe it's there. The national anthem back tattoo means the national anthem back tattoo. 
And that's all you need to know. We've got the best people working on it. I'm not saying that the union doesn't have a bright future. You just need to change your parameters a little bit. We could change the use of the, the building. There could be an ice rink somewhere in here. You know, I'm not, you can't say there couldn't be. There could be an ice rink. We could turn it into a summer retreat for one of the fruitier dictators out there. Someone's nephew, perhaps. It could be a private cinema for some sort of billionaire tyrant. It doesn't matter. But if you insist on it staying a place of debate, just change the nature of the debate. I read that in 2013 you had David Blaine as a speaker. That's the kind of thing we're talking about. <laughs> a man whose grasp on reality is so thin that he decided to live in a box above the Thames for however long it was with no food and water, and he thought British people wouldn't make fun of him for that. That's the kind of nonsense we should be filling this room with. Stuff not of substance. Ignore the outside world, that kind of thing. The union often gets put under pressure uh, not to host people uh, because of their controversial views. Now, that's the right idea. That's exactly the kind of thing we need to see more of, people being forced out of positions of free speech, except it's been coming from a lot of grassroots groups, and that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the CIA, things like that. The kind, of per, the kind of people that have a few South American coups under their belt before they start fiddling in student politics. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about now. I will, uh, <laughs> I will give you guys a list of uh, possible debates you could have for the rest of term if you decide to adopt my ideas now, which I do recommend, uh, pre-whatever happens. I mean, World War III is around the corner, so just uh, here's some ideas. Is the Arctic uh, selfish for having ice all over those resources? Yes, it is selfish. Journalists, kill or just intimidate? <laughs> Both, just the second one first. It's very hard to intimidate a body. Uh, and of course, constant golf trips. Is this the leadership the United States needs? Real debates we can all sink our teeth into, things of no consequence, things that will not interfere with our funding. Experts might have you believe that we need to have debate. Well, I'm tired of experts. We all are in this country. Experts say things like we should stay in the EU. They say things like we need to build more housing. They say, Pierre, you can't use hair removal cream on your genitals. Well, I've had enough. <laughs> I've had it up to my screaming red balls with experts. <laughs> they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> the swelling goes down. In many ways, the patient knows more about the right treatment than the doctor, which is why my pockets are crammed with Valium. <laughs> so, I will now introduce two new sections which I'd like you to consider for inclusion in the union from now on as an engine of general hypocrisy and propaganda. Uh, the needless slandering of my opponents. So, let's see, get some slandering. The nice thing about slander is that when you come up with it, it literally shouldn't be true, so it's not, there's no research required. <laughs> you just make it up. Uh, if you look at footage of the assassination of JFK, right as his head explodes, right in the back, there's a little face just in the crowd eating an ice cream and laughing. That's Phil Wang! <laughs> Apparently. Allegedly. Emma, you missold everybody's nan, PPI. <laughs> and you know, that thing where, uh, you know that thing where you really need to sneeze and then you don't sneeze and it feels horrible? Emmeline's doing. <laughs> and Ruby, I've been told that you can't even get a wink of sleep unless you've hoofed a tumbler of gin into an orphan's eyes. <laughs> so I've read. That's the important part. You need to make sure you can't be sued for as long as the judiciary exists. Now, for the next section, which is more relevant considering that we're here in the West, uh, the needless blaming of minorities that are not present or sufficiently represented. Ah, here we are. Um, now, this is uh, where you blame any minority you can think of for anything that you find tedious about daily life and the human condition. Uh, you know when you're at a restaurant and the food arrives and it's cold? Thanks, Inuits. <laughs> there we go, that was a good one. Uh, what else? Oh, sometimes I set an alarm on my phone when I have something important to do, but I snooze it and I sleep through it, but I don't remember that I snoozed it. And then I wake up and I feel like someone else, someone else did it because I don't remember. <laughs> Thanks a lot, the Impondo people of the Eastern Cape. <laughs> ah. 
Often uh, buttons fall off my jacket as well. Who hates buttons? The Amish! <laughs> That's who. These are the three dragons we must slay to preserve the freedom of this great country. The Amish, the Inuit, and the Impondo people of the Eastern Cape. A lot of people think they're part of the cause of, you know, major tra- They're not. They're their own group. And they must be dealt with. In summation, I will not rest until that chair is filled by a megalomaniac sexual predator with a reading age of 10 and a suitcase full of rubles and blood diamonds. That's the kind of thing we want here in this chamber. Anyone who disagrees with you is your enemy. Anyone who's unhappy with the way the country's going is a traitor. And you may not agree with what they say, but you should defend to the death their right to be sent to a camp somewhere far away for saying it. If you agree, then you agree with me that this house is a joke. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pierre, for opening for the proposition and the debate as a whole. We now move to slide opposition, and the first speaker is Phil Wang. Phil is a comedian, writer, and was the 2012 Footlights president. He has appeared on a number of uh, different programs, including Live at the Apollo and Have I Got News for You. Phil, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, I did kill JFK. <laughs> and I'd do it again. And I did, he was shot twice. <laughs> shot on that first time, felt so good, I gotta get him in the head as well. <laughs> Thank you, Pierre. Um, good evening. So, this house is a joke, huh? <laughs> this house is a joke. This house, this house is a joke? I think not, ladies and dweebs. Let us approach from first principles this motion that house and a joke are one and the same, okay? Now, the latest hardback edition of Wikipedia <laughs> defines a joke as a display of humor in which words are used within a specific and well-defined narrative structure to make people laugh. Whereas the very same Wikipedia defines house <laughs> as an American television medical drama <laughs> on the Fox Network that ran from November 16th, 2004 to May 21st, 2012. Need I say more? <laughs> According to a panicked telephone conversation I had with your ENTS officer today, yes. It is, however, very clear from what I have said that these two definitions, that of a joke, a linguistic or visual incitement of humor, and that of House, an eight-series tour de force by Hugh Laurie, <laughs> are categorically different things. It therefore follows that the statement, this house is a joke, is demonstrably absurd. The very existence of this debate itself, ridiculous. Dare I go so far as to posit a counter motion? that the motion, this house is a joke, is a joke. <laughs> I do dare, and I have gone so far. But, but for the sake of argument, and because I now realize I may have clicked on the wrong definition of house, <laughs> let me now continue on the assumption that we are, in fact, talking about this house to mean the Cambridge Union as a joke. I'll begin by humoring the proposition, all right? The only humor this house will allow, because it is not a joke. But let us assume this house is a joke, for argument's sake and for fuck's sake. <laughs> Can we construct a situation in which the contended assertion this house is a joke is true? Well, let's try. The union, the Cambridge Union, is called a house. But it isn't, is it? <laughs> no one lives here. It has no discernible sky package. Yeah. Most committee Live here. Yeah, are you are you part of the committee? Is it, <laughs> is that why you're on the balcony? <laughs> Get out of here, ex committee, you weirdo. <laughs> okay. I'll start that again. No one lives here except that creep. <laughs> 
the, the union has no sky package. There is no bedroom, maybe there is. Well, the Cambridge Union is certainly not like my house. Nothing like my house. My house doesn't have a president. My house doesn't have a term card. My house doesn't have a toilet. <laughs> and no house I've ever been to has had its own dedicated debating hall. Except perhaps my family's dining room at Christmas, but... Um, <sighs> <laughs> It can be agreed, therefore, that fundamentally, this house is not really an actual house in the traditional sense. Now, according to the proposition, one should be able to construct a joke based on this premise. And the joke might go thus. A man knocks on the door of the Cambridge Union. The Union president opens the door, it being the tradition of the Cambridge Union to allow safe passage to all travelers. <laughs> the man asks the president, what is this place? The house, replies the president of the Cambridge Union, or Pote Coup. <laughs> a house, continues the man. Who lives here then? No one, answers Pote Coup. <laughs> See, not funny at all. <laughs> and therefore, Wikipedia's requirements for a joke are not met. <laughs> to further illustrate the point, let us implant the Cambridge Union into well-known joke formats and note the results. Okay? In keeping with the theme of a stranger at the door, we'll try a knock-knock joke. Knock-knock. Who's there? The Cambridge. The Cambridge who? Almost the Cambridge who -nian. <laughs> Again, dreadful. <laughs> Another one. Why did the Cambridge Union cross the road? To build an extension with funds garnered from membership fees? and donations of most likely ethically dubious origin. <laughs> See, got a couple of claps, but not funny. It is now impossible for me to, so it's, I've shown it's now impossible for me to construct any effective joke out of the topic of this house. And I'm the finest gagsmith in the country. I make the best gags around, <laughs> mainly for BDSM purposes. <laughs> Fit right in the mouth, they do. <laughs> Wang's gags. <laughs> if you're a gimp who's got a bang, make that gag a wang. <laughs> now, I find it always serves these debates to look to the great thinkers of the past for guidance, yes? Many philosophers have tussled with the question of what this house is. Alex Turner, lead singer of the Arctic Monkeys, once said, this house is a circus, berserk as folk. Now, precisely what fuck is supposed to mean, we may never know. <laughs> the monkeys are, after all, a notoriously difficult band to pin down, especially now that winter has come and they have returned north once more into their native Arctic tundra <laughs> to resume their nomadic lives hunting seal and fashioning bass guitars out of whalebone. <laughs> but it is clear, what is clear is that Turner's statement, this house is a circus, we get that. Now, at first glance, this would seem to damage my position. You know, as we all know, circuses involve clowns. Clowns like Pennywise from It. Now, I haven't read it, but I hear it's hilarious. But circuses also involve animal performers, elephants, lions, bears. Now, these poor beasts are famously abused by their handlers, forced to work for well below minimum wage, and forbidden from eating their delicious audiences. And animal cruelty? Well, that's not funny at all. Except, of course, when it's done on a parrot, the clown of the animal kingdom. Another great thinker on the subject of this house, Kirsty Olsop, once said, this house is on the market for 350,000 pounds, <laughs> a significant amount over Jan and Eric's humble budget. <laughs> now, if you saw Jan and Eric's reaction to Olsop's bombshell on that episode of Location, 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 you'd have seen no one was laughing at all at this house. But perhaps the most enlightening question is the one staring us in the face. What do the actions of this union suggest about its possible status as a joke. To answer this, I went to the Cambridge Union's Facebook page to inspect a selection of its events from which I hope to ascertain the seriousness of this house's mission. These union Facebook events are as follows, and I think you'll agree that they couldn't be stronger, an antithesis to frivolous. British Bake Off live screening. 
in which the cakes of Prue Leith are presented to a live audience and screened by security professionals for Class A drugs and explosives. <laughs> karaoke night, an evening's discussion on the subject of karaoke, cultural appropriation, or just singing. <laughs> Poppy therapy, students feeling the stress of Michaelmas, come on down to the Cambridge Union and provide psychotherapy to an array of abused dogs. <laughs> and maybe find out what real stress is. <laughs> Public speaking workshop, in which participants are taught how to more confidently, confidently talk to an audience. Private speaking workshop, in which participants are taught how to more confidently talk to themselves. <laughs> the list of Facebook events continues. Vote Angus Sato for QCU NUS delegate. Vote Kareen Velashi for QCU NUS delegate. Vote Keelan Kelleher for QCU NUS delegate. Vote Lola Olufemi for QCU NUS delegate. Vote Miriam Gauntlet for QCU NUS delegate. Vote Ed McNally for QCU NUS delegate. Vote Daniel Davison Vecchioni for QCU NUS delegate. Vote Connor McDonald for QCU NUS delegate. Vote Martha Krish for QCU NUS delegate. Vote Laurie O'Connell for QCU NUS delegate. Vote Lawrence Oulds for QCU NUS delegate. And Zumba. <laughs> we can take from this list of the union's Facebook events two conclusions. First, that literally everyone wants to be the QCU NUS delegate <laughs> for some undefinable reason. And second, that the Cambridge Union's activities are without exception deadly serious. By extension, we must therefore all agree that this house is quite seriously no joke at all. <laughs> Thank you for your time, and if you have been impressed by my performance here today, please remember to vote Phil Wang for QCU NUS delegate. <laughs>
mistake in the topic. Uh, which part of Malaysia are you from? <laughs> You're not from Malaysia? Oh, West Malaysia. Go fuck yourself, West Malaysia. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In absence of any. Any points in abstention at all? Anyone that thinks of the motion wants to take up a counter motion? People from um, West Malaysia are assholes. That's all I know. <laughs> That's my objection. I don't think. <laughs> I think we've got one just at the back on the left. Oh, here. okay. Um, I think we've got a point. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um. Hi, uh, you claim to be an ASNAC with a career, and from one ASNAC to another, how are we supposed to take you seriously when you say that? <laughs> <laughs> am, I, am I turned? Yeah, okay. If you can take a loose collection of quotes from 8th century saints and get paid to do anything, you should be taken very fucking seriously indeed. <laughs> Also, a real fact, a statement of fact can be funny because I told you all about my bright red balls and everyone laughed. So, hey, take that back. <laughs> Fucking Western Malaysia. <laughs> and with that, we move back to the debate. So, the second speaker on Cyprus. Anya has been laying low since January 2016 after she caused the split of One Direction. You can POI her on that. And this is her first public appearance since the court case. Anya, the floor is yours. I mean, that was only my description because I haven't been on, like, have I got news for you, so don't worry about it. So I'll be honest with you guys. Um, I don't have much experience with debating. Uh, my parents love it, though especially this motion, you know. This house is a joke, yeah. This house won't be ours if you keep spending our collective income on Abercrombie and Fitch clothes. <laughs> Hoodies don't make you any younger, David. Right. <laughs> but I've read the WikiHow page, okay? I've learned the lingo, I'm down with it. So people of the jury, I've got a question for you. <laughs> Why are we here tonight? To laugh? Yeah, sure. To think? Maybe, some of us for the first time. Um, <laughs> Because we got a free dinner included with the debate? Almost definitely. You can, win with, you can win me over with a hot plate of insert what the dinner was here any day of the week. Okay? But that's not all. Sure, we can have fun indulging ourselves with the chance to chuckle at how self-aware we are in our black tie, or in my case, in this suit, which I thought would make me look stylish, but I actually look like a budget air hostess. Um, but I want to have a look at the bigger picture, guys. What's really at stake here? What if tonight, once and for all, we actually prove the notion that the Cambridge Union, the home of the largest and most prestigious student forum for the free exchange of ideas and public debate, is in fact a joke? Okay, something to think about. <laughs> Don't worry though, I'm not gonna throw you straight into the D of this MC without a life jacket. <laughs> I've thought this through and I've assumed a few things will happen in no particular order. Number one, the union president will be forced to carry that weird throne thing down King's Parade uh, on their back wearing nothing but an ill-fitting dinner jacket. <laughs> Number two, we will burn this house to the ground. In its place, we will erect a memorial to commemorate the power of comedy and also a Sainsbury's local. <laughs> Number three, they'll probably have to cancel the rest of the term's events. Number four, that one's just practical. Number four, <laughs> The Cambridge Revolution will begin. The story will hit national, national news and the Telegraph will write an article blaming Lola Olufemi. <laughs> this, my friends, is just the tip of the iceberg that is the power of debate. The power that is in our hands tonight, or in Ruby's case, claws. And what a privilege it is. Sorry, what a lot of privilege there is here tonight. If I had a penny for every white man who passed through these doors, I still wouldn't have enough money to balance out the gender pay gap. <laughs> or, <laughs> or afford a union membership. But uh, in fairness, the union has done very well to have such a diverse panel here tonight. Uh, I think this is the closest uh, Will Hall will ever come to experiencing being a minority. Um, yeah, I know you're on my team, uh, but that doesn't negate the fact that you went to Eton. 
Now, uh, I hope you've all thrown out your weathered denim and donned your fleeces, because I'm about to drench you in some cold, hard facts. <laughs> a lifetime membership at the union costs £199. £199. Do you know what £199 can buy? Rhetorical question. Don't worry, Mags has got you covered. I've done the sums, albeit incorrectly. But who needs maths <laughs> when you have rhetoric, OK? Apparently, most sixth form colleges, but don't worry about it. <laughs> £199 can buy clean, safe water for 12 villages in impoverished countries through Oxfam. 66.3 meals. Meal deals from Sainsbury's. <laughs> 263.69 US dollars. <laughs> 199 items of your choosing from Poundland, provided that you check the labels correctly, because sometimes they cost more than that, which is like really going against their brand name. <laughs> I could go on, and I will. <laughs> 79.6 VKs at Sunday Life. 79.6 VKs at Friday Life. Private medical care for the damage you do to your liver at Friday and Sunday life. <laughs> or it could buy you a union membership. What wonders does that hold? The unmissable chance to watch Stephen Moffat and Mark Gatiss mansplain why it's okay for them to write two-dimensional female characters? Sure. Oh, and this mug. This mug. Um, <laughs> okay, I know it might sound like I'm call it, calling the union elitist. Um, that's because I am. So let's focus on, focus on the notion at hand here. Let's take a look at this house, this house in the middle of this street. Is this house a joke? If a bear shits in the wood, does it make a sound? <laughs> Thanks. So let's get more specific. This house is not just any joke, no. This house is a private joke. Now, in response to all of this, you might say, Anya, the union is actually making a lot of progress in terms of accessibility, especially in recent years, and in comparison to some other Cambridge institutions, it's actually incredibly progressive. To which I'd say, shut up, Wang, this is my time to talk. <laughs> what do you think this is? Some kind of unique forum for the free exchange of public ideas and debate? <laughs> but once I'd calmed down, I'd add, I do acknowledge that, but they've picked a shit debate topic, and this was my only angle into it. Uh, so you can bet your sweet ass I'm going to milk it for everything it's worth. So let's pause for a minute and take a look at the notion of this comedy debate. This house is a joke. I'm no expert in subjects that aren't the spin-off careers of One Direction, but I believe that the notion of motion, I've forgotten what it is, we'll keep going. Notion. Notion of a comedy debate is meant to be first and foremost funny. No offense to the union, but you've fallen at the first hurdle. <laughs> So I've decided to take a look at some of the other topics of debate this term, and I've realized there's a bit of a pattern. Here are some of them. This house has lost faith in faith. <laughs> this house believes social media is antisocial. <laughs> this house believes positive discrimination can never be positive. OK, they all sound like the start of a slam poem. <laughs> um, so I think I've got the hang of it. I've invented some of my own titles. This house believes Great Britain isn't great. <laughs> or Britain. <laughs> this, this house would abort abortion. <laughs> this house believes a good debate title requires repetition. <laughs> and a good debate title. <laughs> you guys are welcome to use all of those next term as long as I get another free dinner. But back to our title, this house is a joke. It's short, it's snappy, it's pretending to be self-aware. Sure, me and the title have a lot in common. Um, <laughs> but had a little more time, effort, and preparation gone into it, it could have been great. Sadly, it's thoroughly average. Yes, the parallel does remain. <laughs> this house is a joke, and so is this speech. But what's wrong with being a joke? Implicit in the phrasing of the question is the idea that it's a negative quality. Sure, it can be bad to be laughed at. In fact, Mark Twain said, the human race has only one really effective weapon, and that is laughter, okay? Which is one of the top five reasons why I think we should send Michael McIntyre to North Korea. <laughs> so what happens if you, the union, are a joke? <laughs> if you're being laughed at? Well, as the old saying goes, if you can't beat them, join them. And if you can't join them, IKEA has probably given you the wrong set of screws. Learning to laugh at yourself is the only way you'll really be self-aware. 
And that seems to be the one aim of this debate. So I'd like to finish with a quote from As You Like It. A fool thinks himself to be wise, but a wise man knows himself to be a fool. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, uh, neither of them would spend £199 on a union membership. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you very much, Anya, for continuing for the proposition. We now move across to the second speaker on the side opposition, Ruby Keane. Ruby is the current Footlights president, and as specified by the union ENTS officer, who is Charlie Packer, sitting to my left, who helped to organise tonight. Um, her bio is exactly 25 words long. Pinecone. Ruby, the floor is yours. <laughs> <laughs> right, OK. I'll start, Pierre. I'll level with you. I did Asnac. I'm wearing velvet. I think your points are all redundant. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> if anyone has any questions at any point, come at me, because I've not got the seven minutes. Hello. Your balls are red. <laughs> so red they've gone full circle, whatever that means. <laughs> anyone else? <laughs> question, I mean, really do come at me. There will be an interval in my speech. <laughs> Which you can just, you know, save the big questions for then, but they should come at me whenever. So, let's begin. In this topic, I wasn't exactly sure what the phrase or the word house meant. So I asked my close colleague, Will Hall, and he said, um. <laughs> I mean, he hasn't spoken it. You don't know if this is a good impression, but <laughs> just brace yourself. He's next. Because <laughs> I thought I'd ask him, like, he knows the union. He's been here. He went to Eton. And you said that. We both slammed Will Hall. Good. <laughs> um, and he said, um, well, house, um, it can refer to the building, but I think it mainly refers to the uh, group of individuals who are within the building at any one time I went to Eton. Um, <laughs> I'm really good at impressions, <laughs> but yeah, that sort of like kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Because like this house referring to the people present, not like the physical structure of the house. It's kind of like the same way when I refer to my body, I don't refer to like the physical structure of bones, muscles, but rather the individuals present inside me at any one time. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, okay. <laughs> but this kind of complicates matters further because is this house the literal individual people present in this room? Or is it the grand scheme of the Cambridge Union Society as a whole? And if it's the latter, then this house is definitely not a joke, because these guys don't fuck around. <laughs> like, no offence. I paid, as Anya's eloquently said, £199 to become a member in first year. I'm fourth year. I've been to two events. <laughs> yep. Which means, <laughs> when, you, when you really break it down economically, I paid £100 to see Jerry Springer, <laughs> and £100 to see Russell Brand. <laughs> so, <laughs> although if you... If you do count this as my third visit to the Union, I've paid myself £66 to be here. <laughs> I'm going to have a good time. <laughs> um, just going to check the old, the old scribes. <laughs> oh, I'm on the next page. Okay. <laughs> Although I'm not complaining, because I probably would have spent £200 to see Jerry Springer anyway, because... I mean, who wouldn't? <laughs> but Russell Brand kind of blurs into a mess of like... <laughs> As I've said, I'm really good at impressions. I do Will Hall, I do Russell Brand. Going to be in the Marlowe Showcase with those two monologues. <laughs> um, but yeah, Jerry Springer, he went up to my friend in the front row and he said quite aggressively, I've got the best job in the world. What did you do today? An essay? <laughs> I spoke to someone who was married to a horse. <laughs> And he did a non-verbal mic drop, <laughs> um, which I mean, I mean, story topping for one, even though he put the story in that person's mouth. But also, I mean, Jerry, I'm going to just, just, just going just gonna to look down here. <laughs> the way he presented those two things, seamless, as opposite ends of a spectrum, like, how was your day on a scale of doing an essay to speaking to someone who was married to a horse? <laughs> Mine was a four. So I'm going to, I mean... I'm going to throw one more Jay Springer anecdote at you before I carry on. In a minute, I'll stop 
stop procrastinating and start, start debating. <laughs> Procrast-debating. Which, I mean, in many circles means a different thing, but okay. <laughs> so Jerry Springer, for a man of his age, uses a lot of verbs. <laughs> Thank you, Emma. He's obsessed. I mean, the man's obsessed. So he'll say things like, cheating, I don't know what you're going being doing that for. And he'll do things like, I was going strolling, walking down the street. And it's like, I mean, Jerry, why use one when you can use seven at the same time? <laughs> That's also my tampon motto. <laughs> We're now going to break for the interval. So if anyone does have any burning cues come at me. Hello, yes. Oh, Phil, do you want to take this one? <laughs> if you are just going to make there we a go. mockery. Okay. <laughs> so my question is, are you, by making a mockery of this, of the debate format, by asking question, by taking a question and answer session during the middle of a debate, are you not just agreeing with the point that this house is a joke anyway? I think my one answer is Jerry Springer was really good at the union. <laughs> and I, yeah, I don't regret seeing him, so thank you. I, mean, I hope I've answered all the points you've raised there. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so I'm going to go with the motion that, you know, this house means the individuals within the house. And so, I mean, like, in many ways, is this house a joke? Are you a joke? Do you self-define as a joke? I'm glad you've said no, because <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're a joke. I think you're strong, positive people, and you're not a joke. And so I've taken the liberty of doing some research on the people who are here tonight, and I'm just going to prove that no matter how weird people seem, no matter how unique they are, no one is a joke. I'm going to stroll, talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> For example, this person. What's your name? Rebecca. So Rebecca here. Rebecca's got two sets of knees. <laughs> But she's not a joke. <laughs> this, what's your name? So Saskia here, she once swallowed 23 antique farthings in a desperate attempt to become known as the Golden Gullet. <laughs> but she's not a joke. Patrick, I know your name. Hello, Patrick here. When it's cold outside, he puts on a condom. For <laughs> <laughs> what's your name? Gideon. So Gideon here. Gideon, Gideon, actually, he tweeted Audible asking when the audiobook of Mein Kampf was going to come out. <laughs> but, you know, he's not a joke. Like, he does, he does, he does him. What's your name? Hello. Max, I sat next to you at the dinner. Max thinks that Marmite and Marmalade come from the same animal. <laughs> oh. Emma here, when she's browsing the web, she opens new links in Windows instead of tabs. <laughs> I'm gonna leave you with that, but she's not a joke. No one's Emmeline here. She's gonna go. <laughs> Emmeline thinks that Spag Bowl is onomatopoeic. <laughs> Phil. <laughs> Phil's landed on a, an interesting one. Phil, his Ford Focus failed its MOT because the exhaust was full to the brim with pate. But he's not a joke. <laughs> gonna walk over. Hello, what's your name? Tom. Tom. Tom did the sorting hat quiz on Pottermore.com and got Sheffield Wednesday. <laughs> Pierre, when he's making a roast dinner, he throws away the veg and cooks the peel. <laughs> Anya Magliano Wright throws away the apple, eats the apple sticker. There we go, we're powering through these. There's a lot more than I remember writing. <laughs> Will Hall once referred to my womb as the leaky cauldron. <laughs> But he's not a joke. Ken Cheng arguably is a joke. Okay. <laughs> he's in a minority, though, so it's fine. And this guy. What's your name? Jonas. Oh, like the brothers. <laughs> um, Jonas sets... Okay, okay. Jonas sets a metronome before sex so he can keep the rhythm. <laughs> So anyway, I think I've proved that through cold, hard stats that the majority of a house, the house, <laughs> is not a joke. And I'm going to end with a quote. Anya ended with a quote. I'm going to do the same. From the late, great Ken Cheng. And <laughs> I think really pay attention because it's really, really deep. And he said, 
How's your speech going? <laughs> you can have a joke if you want. Here it goes. You can't spell housing crisis without housing ISIS. <laughs> Thank you, I've been Ken Cheng. Good night. <laughs> The next speaker on side proposition is Will Hall. Will is a third year student here known for his unrivaled availability. He's currently in a long term relationship with chocolate and his friends call him seldom. Will, the floor is yours. Thank you. Those jokes were shit when I wrote them, but on repetition, they're so much worse. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for having me. I'm Will Hall. As you already know, I'm a massive twat. Um, <laughs> Glad we dealt with that. Um, uh, after Ruby's impression, I'm terrified to speak. Uh, I hope it's not that bad. It's a privilege to be addressing you in the world's shittest design theatre. I don't know what's going on here. Um, at this party with a very confused dress code. Not many of you got the memo, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, great honour to be at the Cambridge Union. Um, yeah, you know, big place to be to be speaking. After all, they don't call it the world's greatest debating chamber. Um, but yeah, so, so I said, I'm, I'm Will. Um, you ought to do a fun fact, that's what everyone says. You know, you're going to talk, you ought to start with a fun fact. Um, well, <laughs> trouble is, guys, my fun fact was the same for years. It, it, it's uh, always been the same, and it, it used to be um, that I was a virgin. <laughs> but um, <laughs> let's just say I can't use that one anymore because <laughs> um, everyone's heard it. So <laughs> uh, it's a great shame. Um, the first part of my speech literally appeared verbatim in, in Phil's, so I'm, it's fine, I'll just skip over that. I'm not accusing you of plagiarism, but, um, you know, it was my spot and I got news for you. Um, but uh, I'll move on to my second point, which is uh, I thought the best way to find out about the, uh, the Cambridge Union and whether or not this house is a joke was to speak, about, uh, to speak to people who've spoken here in the past. So I took the liberty of ringing up every single celebrity, dead and alive, who's spoken here <laughs> previously. It's a long list, strap in. Um, so, uh, first I tried Dame Judi Dench, uh, lo lovely Dame Judi, uh, but she refused to talk. She said she didn't have a nice word to say about the place, uh, and actually slammed the phone out. It was quite rude, uh, in a way. Uh, Stephen Fry, same story. Um, tried the cast of Made in Chelsea, who actually live upstairs, with, with that guy from earlier. Um, <laughs> they're always here. Um, uh, they were very busy, they were learning next week's scripts, so they couldn't talk. Um, Theo Pafita spoke here once, so, you know, the dragon drags den. I, uh, I rung him. Um, didn't get through, just got through the voicemail. I don't think he could talk, because it just said, I'm out. And uh, <laughs> that joke is actually hilarious, <laughs> if you think about it. So, um, <laughs> thank you. so uh, I decided maybe I'd have more luck with, with dead, peop uh, dead people who've spoken here. And uh, obviously, you can't talk to them directly, but um, they ha they've left papers and stuff. And uh, there was a guy called uh, um, Winston Churchill who spoke here a while ago. <laughs> I think he's an actor. Um, <laughs> And he had this, I think it's a poem, I'm not sure. I found it in his papers, uh, and it says, uh, we shall fight on the beaches, we shall fight on the landing grounds, we shall fight in the fields and in the streets. The Cambridge Union is a joke. <laughs> we shall fight in the hills, we shall never surrender. Um, it doesn't rhyme, but, you know, it's, quite, it's all right. It's, it's not my fave. Um, so I thought it was pretty good evidence that the Cambridge Union was a joke. This dead poet loved it. Um, but um, I needed more. And then I sort of realized maybe the best way to argue this debate is not to think about the house itself or previous speakers, but to think about who's speaking at the moment, um, me. Um, and so to answer this question, I'm going to ask the question as to whether I'm a joke. Uh, and at first I thought, you know, I'm not a joke. <laughs> I'm not a joke. I'm, I'm the opposite to a joke. I am not funny. But then I, I dug a little deeper, and I looked into my past. And um, guys, it's amazing what can remind you of the past. It could be a, could be a song, or a taste, or someone telling you about the past. <laughs> In my case, it was memory. <laughs> um, so I'm going to give you a little rundown of events that have happened in my past. and. Um, and uh, I know you guys are millennials, you wanted, you wanted uh, some sort of BuzzFeed style list, so that's what we've done. Um, and uh, maybe that'll answer the question of whether, if not this house, whether I'm a joke. Um, so 
Point number one. My childhood nickname from my parents was The Accident. <laughs> it's not funny. Number two. I thought I knew what friendship was, but in 2014, nobody neck nominated me. <laughs> it's a niche one, if you remember that. <laughs> Point three. I failed my driving theory test twice. That's not even funny, it's just true. Um, <laughs> I refused to pay for the full version of the app, because, uh, you know, there was a light version, and it didn't come with the hazard perception videos, so when it got to the test, I thought they were just information videos and watched them all. <laughs> Admittedly, the second time, I knew exactly what was coming, and I had no excuse for that. Um, as a teenager, I didn't play the field. I played the cello. <laughs> Number five, I'm not good at dating. I recently went on a Tinder date, and my date asked me, so what are you looking for? And I panicked and said, my cat. I then got up and started searching under all the other tables <laughs> before slowly returning and having to mourn the death of a cat which never existed. <laughs> Point six. There's nothing cheeky about a Nando's for what? I'm, I don't know why that's there. Um, <laughs> it's not a point, but it's just a piece of wisdom. Nothing cheeky about a Nando's for one. Um, <laughs> I ring up now. They know my fucking name there. Okay, number seven. When I was younger, I asked my mum if she thought I'd grow up to be handsome. She said, I don't know. Oh, no, sorry, I misread mis that. She said, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Point number eight as to why I'm a joke. Um, I'm so unambitious that on my bucket list, it just says Northern Lights, brackets, finish reading. <laughs> Point number nine. I'm misunderstood. People think I'm posh. People think I'm posh just because my first word was gardeners. Plural. Plural's embarrassing, I must admit. <laughs> I think this is unfair, and I'm always protesting it. The other day, I was saying to my friend, I'm not posh, actually. And he goes, you literally live in Chelsea. And I said, and? And? And Sussex, exactly. Point number 10, this is, mm, see what you think of this, this is absolutely true. Um, as a baby, my parents used to tell people that they only had one child, my sister. It gets worse. Whenever we had guests, they used to dress me up as a haunted Victorian doll <laughs> and place me in the rocking chair in the corner of the sitting room, <laughs> pretending no one could see me, which means for a while, I literally was a joke. It's zero out of ten for parenting, but fair play, it's quite funny. <laughs> Point 11. When I was at primary school, I got cast in the, in the nativity in the role of spectator, who sat in the audience, leading the applause for my friends. <laughs> so, they were the best reasons I can think of as to why I was a joke. But of course, this debate isn't, you know, this house was a joke, it's this house is a joke. And I thought, you know, I'm a different person now. It's, that, was, that was the plan. I thought maybe uni would be the time it would all come together for me, um, and so, you know, fresh start. So when I, um, when I applied, I thought maybe, maybe Cambridge is the place where I can slough off my embarrassing past, like a, like a snake shedding its embarrassing past. Um, <laughs> you know, I thought I want to be cool, not cringe. I want to be banter, not boring. I want to be loved. <laughs> um, so I thought, I'll apply to Cambridge. And uh, I was going to apply for ASNAC, which has already come up, um, but I thought it was a bit backdoor. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so instead, I applied for theology. And um, I'm going to tell you a story about how I tried to break free from being a joke and how it didn't work. This was my, the day of my interview. I remember it very clearly. It was three years ago. Uh, we were all sitting around in a semicircular room uh, before, the, before the interview, and we were all chatting, and I already made a new friend. That's how sociable the new world was. I was chatting away. He was a math nerd, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Um, and we were having a great chat, and uh, my interview was coming up quite soon, and I thought, I know what, I'd just better do a bit of preparatory reading for my, for my, um, for my interview. And so, because um, of applying for theology, I got out the book I was reading, which was the Bible, um, <laughs> preparation for, for the interview. And um, I was reading away, and I suddenly became aware that the entire room 
had gone completely silent. And I looked up, and everyone was staring at me in silence. And it suddenly dawned on me that they thought I was trying to pray. <laughs> now, the guy next to me, because basically they didn't know how long they had to be quiet for, uh, and the guy next to me, I don't know why he, why he said this, but he goes, you know, you can read it aloud if you like. At this point, I should have obviously turned around and said, oh, no, I'm actually applying for theology. That's what I'm applying for theology. But uh, no, apparently, I started reading. <laughs> Worse still, I happen, genuinely happen to be in the book of the Bible of Leviticus, <laughs> Old Testament. So now I'm a stranger in a room full of other strangers, publicly decrying homosexuality. <laughs> and uh, I suddenly realized I'd turned a couple of pages. We were together quite a while. And I thought, I'm going to have to end this eventually. But I, there's only one way to end a prayer. I thought, shit. And I looked up at my disciples, my friends, my new friends. <laughs> and I said, amen. And they all looked back at me and said, amen. Thank you very much. I'll remember one time. Thank you very much, Will. And now to continue the case on side opposition, we have Emmeline Downey, who is just happy to be here. Emmeline, the floor is yours. Oops. Okay, first things first. Uh, time to drop some truth bombs up in this bitch. No, no, what I should say right out the gate, uh, make one thing very clear. I have no idea what I'm doing, okay? I, I really, I, I just don't know. So that's, but that's fine, um, because you're an absolute fool if you think I'm going to pass up on an opportunity to roast the big you, okay? Not going to happen. <laughs> I'm ready for the roast. Are you ready for the ride? That's the real question. <laughs> No, uh, and also we're saying that uh, if you don't like jokes about early noughties CBBC personalities, then this might not be the seven minutes for you. <laughs> um, so I'm going to change tack from my fellow teammates right off the old bat. I'm going to delve deep into some ill-judged satire about this place, the Cambridge Union. Uh, no, it's not going to be funny, but it is going to be what you're expecting. So every cloud, right? Uh, let's ask the question then. Is this house a joke? No. Is it a bastion of white male privilege that entrenches the idea of politics being a game played by an exclusive club, perpetuating elitism with its financial inaccessibility and grandiosity? Maybe, it's really not for me to say. <laughs> but if all that's true, then this house certainly isn't a joke, because there's surprisingly little funny about that. Punchlines are meant to make you laugh, not feel scared and sad. <laughs> So funnily enough, up until about 24 hours ago, this, this was all the argument I had. Then I had another little think, and it dawned on me that we're actually in an incredibly serious institution. I said to myself, hey, Emmeline, let's place the politics, the elitism, the patriarchy on the back burner for one quick second, OK? Because some important people have sat in this chamber. It's a sober affair. The union has hosted Bill Oddie, Russell Kane, and Tim Vine, for example, all of whom are notoriously unfunny. <laughs> right? um, though it's unfair to tar all guests with that brush, there have been some top-rate comedians invited to speak, like um, Joe Brand and Simon Amstel and the Right Honourable John Burko, to name but a few. Um, and I personally find myself in no place to criticise or laugh at the house. It's impressive. I know this looks like plaster and wood, but the structural integrity of this building is actually reliant on prestige, convention, and sickening injections of wealth. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? Founded in 1815, the Cambridge Union is the oldest debating society in the world. Okay? That's an incredibly long tradition of having the same debates and coming to the same conclusions to upkeep. <laughs> it's important that we continue to remind ourselves that women are people. The right-wing press shouldn't be left unsupervised, and Marty McCutcheon deserved better in Love Actually. All important issues. Okay? Um, in fact, I believe that the motion that this house is a joke actually undermines the immeasurable wider significance of the Cambridge Union. 
There absolutely needs to be a place in Cambridge to have the important conversations. And when King's Parade Nero is busy, here we'll do just fine. <laughs> the union doesn't shy away from tackling the big questions, such as, does this gig count as a camdram credit? And who would win in a fight, Paul or Barry Chuckle? <laughs> My money is on Paul. Barry is scrappier, but Paul really has the weight behind him. It's just my view. But I see I haven't, haven't convinced you yet. No, you're still sitting there thinking, yeah, this house is a goddamn joke, all right? <laughs> Only a select few really care about what goes on here. It's just shouting into the void. Emmeline, stop shouting into the void. You're just contributing to the void noise. <laughs> well, I'm afraid you simply aren't grasping the bigger picture. No. It's not just about the high-flying celebrity guests, not you, Ken. It's about, <laughs> it's about the people, all right? There's a tireless committee that make this place run like clockwork. And for the love of God, don't underestimate them, because the current key players in this union will probably be making significant decisions on our behalf in 10 to 15 years' time. They're the government ministers of tomorrow, the barristers of the very near future, the corporate bankers of soon. So, yeah, before you start laughing at the union, maybe stop a minute and have a think about the very meaningful contribution it's making to society, okay? Right. And at this stage, yeah, maybe I should add that I'm actually a member of the Cambridge Union, and my satirising of the house is both hypocritical and ultimately fairly unwise. <laughs> um, I really must learn to read the room better. <laughs> Having said that, the palpable silence in this chamber tonight is testament to the fact the house isn't a joke, so really, I should be thanking you for proving my point. <laughs> in fact, this whole debate hinges on the house taking itself seriously, and I really wanted to believe that that was true. This is important because, Cambridge Union, you've got to learn to love yourself first, all right? Have a bit of self-belief, for God's sakes. <laughs> Unfortunately, when I went on the website, I found some distressing jokes that, in the wrong hands, could be used to undermine the solemnity of this institution. Said things like, we offer a space for members to engage with individuals from all walks of life. <laughs> hey, Union, cool it with the punchlines already, okay? <laughs> Whose side are you on here? <laughs> Having said that, and without wishing to flog what is a very, very dead horse, I mean, really a, a horse carcass, some bones that once was a horse, <laughs> The motion itself is so very humorless. Is the union trying to be self-deprecating? By opening itself up to satire, is it trying to be self-aware? Does it really think its members want to be dragged so aggressively for their poor monetary decisions? Well, Michael Moore once said, you can't debate satire. Either you get it or you don't. And really, that makes this debate utterly pointless. The motion raises more questions than it answers. Why am I here? Who thought this was a good idea? How much emodium is enough emodium? <laughs> I don't know. Just think about it. That's all I'm asking. So remembering which side of this debate I'm actually on, um, I must rally to the union's defense, however. It's an essential part of the Cambridge landscape and has been for a very long time. We must not point and laugh at this house, bent over double at its attempts to stay relevant, tears rolling down our faces at its annual defense of the membership fees, etc. Really, we should be thanking the house. I thought about all the things the union has given me in my short time here. So thank you, union, for allowing me to watch Mary Berry give some confused answers about what can go in a microwave. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, as that's literally all I have used my membership for thus far, I went out to the people, okay, and I asked them what they'd like to thank the union for. So thank you, union, for your top-rate paninis. End of list. <laughs> so all things considered, Cambridge Union, just going just gonna to drop a simile now. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a big one, so get ready. Um, Cambridge Union, you're a, you're a lot like Paul Chuckle's left thumb insofar as you're quite white, you're capable of doing some serious damage to the little guy, and also there's only one of you. My analysis of this <laughs> deadly serious and unique debating powerhouse has led me naturally and methodically to one conclusion. This house is no laughing matter.
Thank you very much, Emmeline, for continuing for the opposition. We now go to the second floor round. Anyone can make a point in proposition, opposition, or abstention of the motion. Have we got any points in proposition? Um, I think we've got, we've got one at the top there. say is I'm not not that person. <laughs> we'll leave it there. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Are there any points in opposition of the motion or more questions for what the opposition raised? Um, no, nothing. Upstairs, downstairs. Okay, anything? In, uh, hold on. Okay, we've got something over there. Go ahead. Go, go ahead, make... Um, to carry on on that Jerry Springer topic, right? <laughs> um, my question is, why would you think that £200 was a perfectly good price to pay to see Jerry Springer when you can see him on a TV or on your internet, on your laptop if you wanted to? I'll level with you. When you're watching them on the TV, you're not in the splash zone. You don't get the saliva in your face. <laughs> That's what you're paying for. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> I think we'll move to I mean, points and extension <laughs> or more questions about the Jerry Springer experience. Is there anyone that would like to raise a point and abstention the motion? Um, we've got one just in the blue jumper there on the right-hand side. The with the brown, uh, just with the brown hair there. Okay, we'll take two points in abstention then. Both people in blue jumpers can make points in abstention. Fab, fab, thanks. I, I, I'm sort of ambivalent on this motion because uh, while uh, this house shares something very closely in common with Paul Chuckles' thumb in that it's up his own ass, um, there's, uh, and there's plenty of ASNACs in the house this evening. It's almost, it's almost like an ASNAC departmental meeting. We've got one on the proposition, one on the opposition, one in the president's chair. Um, and trust me, as an ASNAC myself, there's nothing quite so laughable as an ASNAC departmental meeting. Um, but the House is also very serious. We, we hear from, from very serious people like, like Chairman of KUKA and, and, and Vice Chairman of the Liberal Democrats, who, if he's here tonight, speaking of private jokes. Um, but as I say, I, I'm, I'm uncertain, and, and with the addition of the very serious chap on the, on the third row, uh, I, I, think I, I, I think I would abstain this evening because I'm not quite sure. I will also be abstaining. <laughs> yeah, so, go ahead. Um, I'm struggling to make my mind up because I feel both sides have made promises they fail to keep. The proposition uh, started a precedent of telling us exactly what they were wearing and they did not follow through and I'm <laughs> deeply upset about that. And uh, the opposition did promise us niche references to early naughty CBBC presenters and I'm upset about the lack of references. <laughs> Paul and Barry chuckle was just not enough for me. <laughs> I'll try harder. <laughs> yeah, we have a right to reply and side proposition. Am I loud? You're live. I'm live. <laughs> Surely the complete failure of this team to follow any precedents you claim we've set further underlines what a goddamn joke this whole thing is. Proof for the proposition, I say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And I'm still amplified, so that also is proof of incompetence. <laughs> Am I st I'm, I'm still amplified. <laughs> and with that, we're going to move back to the proposition and the closing speakers. Closing for side proposition, we have Ken Cheng. Ken is an ex-Mathmo Cambridge dropout, a professional poker player, and a stand-up comedian. He was also the winner this year of the Dave Joke of the Fringe Award. So, Ken, the floor is now yours. Uh, 
Um, I was promised a clicker for the PowerPoint presentation. Thank you. How do you, how do you use this thing? Uh, we're gonna just watch me learn for a few seconds. Like this? Oh yeah. We're, we're in business. Okay. So what is a joke? Well, why don't I show you some examples of jokes? Here's some. Um, I walked in on my flatmate and he had his pants down and on the screen was an optical illusion. He jumped up and screamed, it's not what it looks like. <laughs> it's the first joke. It's an example of a joke right there. Here's another joke. I was watching a movie, but my uncle recorded over the ending with his sex tape. It was a bit of an anticlimax. <laughs> Just an example, guys. Um, actually, the first ever joke I ever wrote was an auntie joke. Uh, I was five years old at the time. It goes like this. Knock, knock. <laughs> auntie. I should point out at this stage, my aunt's name is Auntie Who. <laughs> it's a very niche joke. <laughs> Only works with specific family members. Uh, my reasons for learning origami are twofold. Uh, I was in the shops the other day and I was, I was contemplating stealing a magazine but in the end, I just couldn't take the heat. <laughs> 47 Facebook likes say you're wrong about that joke. <laughs> I like to test my jokes out on Facebook. My Facebook statuses are entirely made up of jokes from this set. Didn't really work as a status, that one. <laughs> Got a very niche joke. Uh, let's move on. Who am I? Ken Cheng, to decide what is a joke. Well, what are my credentials? I'll let my award speak for itself. <laughs> That's right, superb English homeworks and writing with flair in year 10. Now that we've established that I'm an authority on jokes, let's look at some houses. Here's, here's some houses which I think are jokes. House of Lords, <laughs> the White House, <laughs> Doctor House, thank you, Phil, uh, already preempted it, that's why you go first, smart guy, <laughs> House Doctor, the House of Fraser, the House of Fraser, <laughs> um, both Big Mama's House movies. <laughs> the Big Blue House from The Bear in the Big Blue House. Let's freeze one second. Why the fuck is a bear living in a house? <laughs> What's going on there? What kind of amenities does this house offer a bear? Also, his name is just Bear. That's his name. How arrogant is that? If we, like if I called my child human, <laughs> not even human Chang, just human, no last name. Let's Madonna this bad boy. Um, <laughs> uh, but yes, here are some more joke houses. Don't recognize them? They're the houses of op opposition. <laughs> I found them on Google Street View, Privacy in the modern era is a joke. <laughs> but it's not important what I think makes a house a joke. What does the public think? That's why I typed the phrase, this house is a joke into social media. Let's see what the people have decided. This house is a joke, always a mess. Nobody never wants to clean, <laughs> but can mess and then always bitching about the Wi-Fi. Get over it. <laughs> Just one example. Very low standards for what makes a house a joke. Some more from Twitter. Just had to sick my arm through Narnia to locate the Tommy sauce. This house is a joke. Here's a few more. This house is a joke. I'm no even allowed a biscuits because therefore the builders. <laughs> and finally, my favorite one, 
This house is a joke. Brought myself a box of Capri Suns and someone's had every single fucking one. <laughs> Obviously very low standards for what makes a joke. Uh, but let's put the Cambridge Union under a microscope. Is this house a joke? Well, first of all, uh, let's look at that. Their motto is defending free debate since 1850. Free debate, the irony <laughs> of holding free debate and free speech, charging 199 pounds for membership. There is no free debate here. <laughs> but let's look at this debate itself. And let's go straight over to the Facebook event. Um, notice they misspelled not only my name, <laughs> Chang instead of Cheng, they've also spelled Magliano wrong, and Novelli. <laughs> the only member of my team to go unscathed was Will Hall. <laughs> What's going on there? I have a couple of theories. One is that both Will and Hall are words. <laughs> Very easy to spell those. But maybe another more sinister theory is perhaps the origin of the names they've misspelt. <laughs> Not you can make your own conclusions. Um, anyway, I say this shows a lack of attention to detail. Very unprofessional. Um, but perhaps the biggest sin of this debate is they broke a cardinal rule of all comedy gigs. A cardinal rule is you never book more than one Asian. What's going on? It's chaos. You've created chaos, the union. After the gig, whenever someone inevitably says the Chinese one was funny, how are people going to know who they're talking about? <laughs> but having two Asians is an even bigger problem for me because my main and only debating strategy is I always start off my debate by saying, if you don't vote for the team with the only Chinese person on it, that is worse than both of the opium wars combined. <laughs> and then I do the full 10 minutes in Mandarin. <laughs> I don't even know Mandarin, I just make the noises. <laughs> my strategy, can't do that. I can't do that today because Phil's here. Can't play the race card. The race card is like nuclear weapons. It's only fun when the other team don't have one. <laughs> um, but finally, I'll tell you a story about what underlines, uh, what most underlines what a joke this house is, is my own history with the union and uh, the comedy debate itself. Uh, let's uh, go back to February 2015. There was a great debate on uh, this house is overworked and undersexed. It's a great lineup. I really wanted to go, but I'm not a union member. So I messaged my uh, friend Christoph, who was president of the union at the time. I said, uh, hey, Christoph, would I be able to see the comedy debate tomorrow without being a member? He said, afraid not, Ken. Uh, I thought, how could I respond to try and get him to change his mind? I thought I'd try and elicit some sympathy. I just went, aww. Uh, but then he said, um, I don't think you can go, but you, I don't think you can, but you might be able to buy a ticket, giving a glimmer of hope. But then he said, call this number of the union. And I thought, fuck that, I'm not going to call no number, especially a landline. Are you nuts? <laughs> um, and then he said, uh, best of luck getting in. He'll eat those words. Uh, and then he went, um, no, that's just the next conversation. That's not relevant. That's just the next conversation we had two weeks later. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, so I decided um, I, I want to see this debate. I want to see this debate. But I didn't call the number. I really want to see this debate. So I just decided I'll just show up. What's the worst that could happen? I'll show up. Fast forward to the debate. There I'm right there. <laughs> Bam, there's me. Not only have I got in, security is place is a joke, but I'm also making a point of information. I'm taking part in the union without spending a penny. That, my friends, is free debate. <laughs> um, after that, Christoph and I developed an interesting dynamic. I became very much the Moby Dick to his Captain Ahab. <laughs> Wanted to catch me real bad. He was out for blood. He kept warning the staff to not let me in. 
I, I was smart that I bided my time. Next comedy debate, stayed out of it. Didn't come. Didn't come. It's very smart. It's like when you have, uh, I knew the heat was on me. It's like when you have six stars on GTA. You've got to lay low for a while. <laughs> I bided my time. 20, 2015, next comedy debate, motion was house would happily exist up its own arse. Bam, there I am again, front row. <laughs> Wasn't speaking. I was plus one to none other than Phil Wang over there. A very blurry Phil Wang. I should have uh, went for the high D. High D. Uh, eventually, <laughs> not, I don't think anyone was ever called it high D. <laughs> it's nice. Eventually, I did get invited to speak, though. April 2016, there I am, arguing this house would rather get a life than a first. Great debate. Go watch on YouTube. <laughs> and again, in ha October 2016, this house believes the end is nigh. And now, a third time today, arguing this house is a joke. Well, nothing more exemplifies how much of a joke this place is, more than the fact that I, someone who actively stole from the union, someone who evaded, circumvented membership, and engaged in a lengthy game of cat and mouse with an ex-union president, has since been rewarded with not only four free union dinners, but also three invitations to speak in under two years. Also, look who's sitting next to me, right there on my team, it's Christoph. What the fuck? I've been Ken Chang. You've been fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ken, for closing for the proposition. We now go to Emma Siddy, who's going to close the debate for side opposition and as a whole. Emma is a former footlight and an actress and writer now. Her Edinburgh smash hit, Emma Siddy Telenova, ran at London's Soho Theatre in 2017. Emma, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thanks so much, everybody. To be quite honest with you, I'm down this absolute shit show of a debate. You lot, you want to have a look at yourselves in the fucking mirror. I'm sorry, I'm emotional. You know what's going on? I'll say straight away what's going on for me. I've actually got, um, you'll know about this, I've got a driving test after this debate. <laughs> I'm just nervous. It's one of those nighttime tests and like apparently I got a tip off from a driving instructor that it's only on a dual carriageway. So, I just don't know how I'm going to do the three-point turn, but <laughs> it is what it is. Do you know what I mean? It is what it is. But seriously, though, I'm not happy, right? I'm not happy. You four, in the words of Gordon Ramsay, you, 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 fuck off, fuck off, fuck off, fuck off. <laughs> you there, you, mate, at the back, you've been having a go the whole way through all oh, this, all oh, that. It's, it's not nice, you know what I'm saying? You, you've just let it happen. You've just sat there. <laughs> and I've been sitting here all night, silent as a fish, just letting it go on. It hurts, you bastards, it hurts. Okay, yeah, I'll take your point. No, let him speak. <laughs> Please, for God's sake, let him speak. Go on, mate, yeah. Why didn't you raise a point in opposition or even just say something? You just gotta, you just gotta let him speak like that to me. I tell you something about it. No, I've got your number. You guys don't know this because I haven't been had a chance to speak all the time. He's my cousin's husband. Shut up, mate. I'll see you next week, Patrick. Fucking bastard. But we no, seriously though, we will talk about it then. Hope Elaine's good. Um, <laughs> right, so guys, look, first of all, I also want to give the cut now now, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to have a go at you guys as well. Who here has had the common courtesy to address these people of the house with the respect they deserve? Okay, yeah. So good evening, Madam President. All right. Hello, porn, hello, porn. <laughs> Good evening. Um, man of the desk, how, how do you do? To get, get your fingers out, get your finger. Finger five, finger fees, can of them edit, whatever. Um, and good evening to the balcony rats. 
wasn't that hard to do, guys. It's just how it works, yeah? Okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, when I was first given that Skype call asking if I wanted to be part of this debate, I only use Skype because I like to know what people are wearing when they're speaking to me. <laughs> um, when I first got the Skype call, you know, and I got the whatever, how, how, that, how that noise goes, I was so excited, you know, because it's something I'm really fucking passionate about. Sorry, sorry for swearing. Um, <laughs> No, honestly, though, I'm just emotional. And I, and I won't be taking any more points of information, OK? But if I do get too emotional, just shout it out, too emotional, and I'll try and address that. Um, um, so, yeah, so when I got the Skype call, I said, absolutely, I would love to oppose this motion, OK? Because it's just... Right. Oh, sorry. That's my driving test. I think it's that. So, um, so what I'm going to do to close this up, I'm just going to go into a definition of this motion again to really nail it down, what we're talking about, and find a way of addressing it, OK? So um, to access this definition, I used a dictionary. Um, a lot of you will come across them in your degrees. Don't know about Ark and Amp. Um, but, you know, if you guys... You can ask uh, somebody else who does um, a, a more of a subject. Um, <laughs> So, so when I had a look at it, so we've, got, so we've got this house, from my point of view, is not a joke, okay? This house is not a joke. I didn't really know what it meant, but I knew I was passionate about it. So, <laughs> so first up in the dictionary, we've got this. This. I couldn't find anything. Yeah. But it's obvious, isn't it? All right. Now, this house. What were you saying? What was your shit about? The doctor, the doctor yeah, yeah, all right, Dr. House. It was seriously a good point. I really appreciate it. I'll have been on the team with you. Thank really you. great. <laughs> um, this house, we've got the doctor there. Then we've got the word is, 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 is. Couldn't find anything on that either, so we'll just have to guess. Not. Now here, this is where I got lucky. Not. Okay, not. A join made by tying together the ends of a piece or pieces of string, rope, cloth, etc. E.g., not on my watch. <laughs> Commonly confused with word not, yeah, fine, negative phrase, okay. <laughs> and then finally here we've got A. No, sorry, that's not fine. Again, didn't know what that means. Uh, joke, joke. Okay, now this one is really interesting and we've had various different expressions of this. So for joke, I came up with noun. A large American shrub bearing seeds that are the source of an oil, jojoba oil, used in cosmetics and as a lubricant. <laughs> that stumped me, that. <laughs> Fucking oil. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> Look, I'm going to sack this bit off because I've got stuck. Um, and what I'm going to do is going to take you into a story, okay? Let's, let's go into a story quickly, and I'm going to try and somehow get some, get some uh, purchase on the idea of this house is a joke. Uh, and it's not a joke, in my opinion. Okay, so, okay, all right, all right, change of tack. Who's been shopping today? Who's been shopping today? 85% of the room, what are you fucking doing with your money? <laughs> save it, you idiot, save it. What are you like? Save it. Honestly, for the rainy day, that student debt is going to bite you in the ass. Um, I had a look at mine the other day, 28,000 quid. What? It's nuts. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's seriously a problem. It's dragging me down. Um, but anyway, so, so shopping is a serious thing. And the other day, uh, my mum, genuinely, she shopped till she dropped. <laughs> okay? Yeah? No, really. She literally shopped till she dropped, okay? It's not a nice thing for me to talk about. She shopped till she dropped, okay? From H&M to A&E <laughs> to ER to m &S. She got better. She got a lot better. <laughs> but what we learned from that moment was that it's not just a rhyme, yeah? Uh, shop till you drop. It's a real thing. Yeah, it's a real thing. Thing, okay. And when she was there, she was on her knees, and just before we got to HM, she was in the final throws, scrabbling around. Oh, what the hell? Scrabbling around, and we were in, as mentioned briefly by Ken, House of Fraser. Okay. And she looked at me with her beady little eyes. <laughs> and she said to me, This house is not a joke. 
Yeah. And I know that doesn't seem relevant to this, but in so many ways, it might be. And I do want to clarify there that she didn't say, she did in fact say this house of Fraser is a joke in terms of how big it was, how stressful it was, uh, the fact that it brought her to her knees. <laughs> but I have changed the wording of that for the sake of my own argument, okay? And that is what I feel this house is all about. Um, so, look, guys. I'm just going to wrap this up. It's been a long night. We've all got Cindy's to pull. Um, I know my story doesn't totally match up, okay? I know that the links don't really link together. I know that the threads haven't created a lovely little scarf, okay? I'm aware of that. But guess what? I've graduated, dickheads. So I don't need to worry about it anymore. And I think it's just a driving test. Like, I think... The DVLA to me, like, I don't want to get too emotional about this, but I just think the Nazis are like, I've given them so much money now, and like, it's the ninth time, and I just want to drive a fucking Citroen C1. <laughs> so, um, you know, maybe I'm a joke. If anything, I'm a joke. But I tell you what's not a joke this house. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Thank you very much, Emma, and thank you to all of our speakers tonight, to Will, Anya, Ken, Pierre, Phil, Emma, Ruby, and Annaline. Can we have another round of applause? As ever, tonight you um, can vote by your feet. The house will divide with the motion before the house being, this house is a joke. If you want to vote in favor of the motion, please exit out of the right-hand door, against on the left-hand door, and in abstention through the center door. Thank you very much, everyone.